Fox News. But don't let up now. I wrote the bill on the environment. Don't tell me what the White House is ranked. But pay your fair share. Pay them more. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. you guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today? Man, so now everybody got their eyes on the DEI Vice President Kamala Harris. Did you know that Mr. Biden had appointed her as the border czar? The same border that she never visited? Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole, this whole, this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. You was given a job as the border czar and never visited the border. That's kind of interesting. Interesting. And you keep saying that the border is safe. We're going to have two million people cross this border for the first time ever. You're confident this border is secure? We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. Sure, Kamala. Sure. We trust you. The border is safe and secure. Wink, wink. Last year, November, Kamala was at this New York Times book deal summit. And one of the reporters was saying that, uh, Kamala, we trust you. And if there was something wrong with Mr. Biden, would you come out and tell that to the American folks? She says. More complicated way. I think there's a lot of people would say she can't say anything else. She, she couldn't tell if there was a problem. I'm not lying. <laughs> If there I'm was telling, a, but, I'm, but I'm telling but, you a fact. But if there ever is a problem, yeah. do you think that you could go tell the American public? Do you think in your role that you're, that you're in a position to do that? Of course, if necessary, but there's no need for that. I don't, there is a political argument that is being made that is not based on substance. And you're asking me to hypothesize around what are my duties to the American people as Vice President of the United States that are based on ethics and morals and the law. I will always follow those rules. But I am suggesting to you that it is important we not be seduced into one of the only arguments that that side of the aisle has right now on this issue in a way that is, a t is intended to distract from the accomplishments. You see what just happened there? Just a simple hypothetical, and she cannot answer the question. She refused to answer the question. She is going around in circles. Oh, I don't, I don't do hypotheticals. That will never happen. For argument's sake, hypothetically speaking, if Mr. Biden had an aneurysm and was sick and he couldn't perform his duties, would you? Oh, no, no, no. That's impossible. That will never happen. No, Biden is Superman, and he's, he's strong as the ox. That will never happen. I don't do hypothetical. That's just rush disinformation. We were talking to some Democratic donors, mm -hmm. and they have told us that should something befall President Biden and he is not able to run, mm -hmm. that there would be a free for all for who would run as president. You are in the spot that that would be unnatural for you to step up, but we're hearing from donors that they would not naturally fall into line. Why is that? Well, first of all, I'm not going to engage in that hypothetical because Joe Biden is very much alive 
and running for re-election. What? They always do that, especially her. She will never answer the question. Just hypothetically speaking, Ms. Harris, hypothetically speaking, if Hunter and Joe Biden was selling uh, secrets to China, would you come out and tell, oh, no, 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 I know the Bidens, that will never happen. It will never happen. I, I can't even think that far. That's hypotheticals, and that's a right-wing conspiracy. We don't do that over here. Just for argument's sake, would you answer the question? No, 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 no I don't do hypotheticals. Hypo See, that's how they do it. That's how they do it. What do you say to those concerns, and specifically, if you had to pass the powers to you for one second, one minute, heaven forbid, and, you know, I ask with all due respect, but, you know, would you, are you capable, are you ready to step into the role and do whatever the I country would need? absolutely ready. But thank God our president is in good shape and good health and is ready to lead in our second term. This whole time has been the gasoline campaign. Let's take a listen to Kamala Harris telling us how fine Joe Biden is. Joe Biden, we have a fighter, a leader with skill, vision, determination, and compassion. A leader who keeps his promises. He is um, an extraordinary leader, and I wish that people could see what I see, because uh, there's only one person who sits behind that resolute desk. And the decisions that that person has to make are the decisions that nobody else in the country can make. How well, do you do that? I'll tell you the reality of it is, and I spent a lot of time with President Biden, be it in the Oval Office, in the Situation Room, and other places. Uh, he is extraordinarily smart. He has the ability to see around the corner in terms of what might be the challenges we face as a nation or globally. Why is Biden getting the bad rap and not Trump? I don't get it. Well, first of all, let me just address the issue directly, I, because I spend a lot of time with our president, be it in the Oval Office, the Situation Room, you name it. We have a president in Joe Biden who is forward thinking in a way that we've not seen in a long time. I want to get to the heart of what I think you're raising, which you've said is his age. So let's talk about that. I spend a lot of time with Joe Biden, be it in the Oval Office or the Situation Room. And I can tell you, this is someone who is tireless in terms of working on behalf of the American people. To your point of knowing Joe Biden, he comes from a background and a place in his heart and soul where he cares so deeply about working people, about families. So the way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized could not be more wrong on the facts and clearly politically motivated. Vice President, I am proud to serve alongside one of the greatest, greatest, greatest champions of our nation's warriors, our President Joe Biden. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Mr. Biden, I am praying for you to have a long life, long and prosperous life, at least to the end of your presidency, all right? Do not give the keys to this cackling hen over here. <laughs> Please and thank you. All right. Stay in the race till the end. I believe in you. 80 million Americans believe in you also. <laughs> if you guys got any value on my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you cackling hens, get your ass off my lawn.